So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the source code for the automating and testing a REST API book. So on github.com slash evil tester, in the repositories, we've got the tracks REST case study. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone or download, and I'm just going to download the zip because I'm just going to use the source code. So that has downloaded. So if I now show that in Finder, now I'm doing this on the Mac, but the instructions are pretty much exactly the same for Windows, all you have to do is unarchive it so that you've got it in a folder. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to open a terminal here. Now, the easiest way to open a terminal on Windows is in Explorer, in the file bar, type in CMD and it will open a command line there. Um, if you want to, you can have a look at the videos on the Java for Testers install page. I'll put a link on the video underneath somewhere, probably where am I? there i guess there'll be a link to where you can watch that video and that shows how to download and install java and maven and intellij because i'm assuming you've got those set up so you, the way that you can check is if i do java c minus version really need to have java installed now i assume that if you're installing it now you'll probably have java 9. now i've updated the book source code to work on java 9 now so you should be fine if I do MVN minus version, you need to have Maven installed for everything to work. And there we go. So I have got Maven 3.5.3 installed. And you can see that the Java Home is set to JDK 9. So I've got the Java Home variable set up. Java C is installed. Everything should just work at this point. I've also got IntelliJ installed. I've got both the Ultimate and Community Edition. If you've got just the Community Edition installed, that's fine. That's what I'm going to use for this video. So I have downloaded the source code. There it is. Now you can see here, I have a folder in my downloads called Tracks Rest Case Study Master. And the folder that's really important is the folder that contains this pom.xml file. So if I go into that, yes, there I am, PWD. So I am in that folder at the moment. And what I can do here is I can run everything from the command line. And the reason that is a good idea is because it helps download all the dependencies outside IntelliJ. Now, if I do run this now, it will fail because I haven't set up any of the um, variables in the source code, but that's okay because we'll just use this to download the um, actual dependencies. So if I do maven clean test, and this is what it will look like if your Java and maven is installed correctly, but you haven't yet set up tracks. This is what I'll be expecting you or you should be expecting to see when you run this. So you see some warnings because rest assured is still doing some things that are not uh, completely Java 1.9 compliant, but I'm sure they'll fix that. And it's, it's just warnings. It's not an issue. So you can see here that the test, some of the tests have passed because they're using things external to the tracks project, but then some of them here are starting to slow down a bit because it doesn't know where tracks is. We haven't set it up to run against tracks, but you can see that the tests are actually running. So what I will do now is I will get my virtual machine running. So the I could stop the test, but I'll just let them run and we'll see how long they take. So I'm just going to run tracks, which is already installed in my virtual machine. And there's other videos showing how to get this working. Okay, so tracks is we're running on 192.168.1.15. 192.168.1.15. Hopefully it's that. Five, three, there we go. And I've already used it, so I'm already actually logged in. So let me log out. Uh, was that a mistake? Do I still remember my password? There we go. So and you, there's other videos showing how to install and get tracks set up. So tracks is basically working here. So let me go back. So I'm just going to stop this. I'm going to control C out of that running execution. I've got the source code downloaded. We've run it from the command line. We can see it isn't configured properly, but we know that it's running and we know that Java and Maven are installed and treating this properly. So it's really just a matter of getting the test to work. So if I now get IntelliJ up and running, let's get IntelliJ Community Edition running because that's what I suspect most people will use. The Community Edition is free and is still an excellent editor. There's a few things you don't get access to, but nothing that you will even notice if you are just starting out and beginning with IntelliJ. Okay, so the way to 
get the project into IntelliJ, the easiest way is to open it, not to create a new project or import a project, but simply to open it. And the reason this is the best way to do it for what we're doing is because we've created a Maven project. So you can see in this folder, this is what I'm going to open is the pom.xml file. So I'm just going to click on the folder that has the pom.xml file and I'll open that. Then IntelliJ will see that it's a Maven project. It's picking up the pom.xml. It's going to configure this to work with Java. Now, if you see anything about enable auto imports, just click yes. But this is basically set up now. So in the source file here, test, Maven uh, IntelliJ has picked up this as a Java project, so the tests are there. Now, the way I configure this for my environment is there's the test env defaults class. Now I could find that by doing command O for command open or control N on Windows. And then I'll just do test env defaults and then I can jump to that class. So I need to change this. So I'm running on 192.168.1.53. And I need to change the admin user and password, which is admin and the password is Bitnami because I've configured this from the old Bitnami settings and this should now work. Get test env, use a proxy as false because I've not set this up to go through Fiddler or Burp Suite or anything like that. So now some of these tests should work. So if I go back here and I just do run. So it's running through, it's creating things and all the tests ran there. So we can see that the tests don't actually output very much because most of them are asserting or doing using the um, rest assured functionality to check things. But you can see that in here, it does actually create quite a lot of data. Now I guess to download this, I should probably have cleared this down beforehand, but I didn't. So you just have to take my word for it. Um, but what we can do is over in admin, if I view users, I can see I've got a couple of users there. What I'm gonna do is we have in here in the tracks test data folder some ignored tests which I can use to um, create data. Now, I don't need to change these patterns in order to create new users so I am just going to so this user is already created we can see in here Bob99 password 66 I'm just going to change this a little bit and call it Bob 97 I won't change the password. And then if I run this test, let me get this up so you can see it. I haven't had to change anything to get this test to run. What this test does is it uses the HTTP protocols to create a user because the API doesn't create a user in tracks automatically. So this says it's created a, a user. Well, it doesn't actually say that, but I'm reading this saying um, that it says that. If you read the book, then you'll see what these messages mean. So if I go into users here now, so there's Bob97, that's been created. And if I run this other one, what have we got here? Generate users. Okay, so this creates a bunch of users. Let me just run this one. So this one takes a little bit longer to run because it's going to create, I think, 30 users. Number of users, 30 users. And then it creates to do's for those users and creates a bunch of test data for them. So here it is, it's generating test data, creating that. So all the users have been created in here. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, there we go. So it's created a whole bunch of users in there. And I haven't had to change anything in the code to get this to work. All I did was change the environment defaults and then everything just works out the box. If you experience any issues with red underlines, Maven not working, anything like that, chances are it's at the command line and outside IntelliJ that something has gone wrong. Chances are you haven't uh, opened the project, you've actually tried to import it or you've tried to create a new project from something that's already there. If anything like that happens, what I tend to do in IntelliJ is I will go to the folder because what IntelliJ does is it creates a .iml file and it creates a .idea folder. At least it does on Windows. All right, so it's created a .idea folder there. 
I just can't see it and there it's hidden. So what I do is I delete the IML file. I delete the .idea folder and then I just open it again and try and start from scratch. Sometimes what will happen is that the IntelliJ will not be able to pick up your install of Java. Perhaps the Java home hasn't been set up, in which case if I go to the project, do open module settings, then in make sure that there's an SDK installed. If there isn't, I just do add JDK and then choose the path where the JDK is installed. In this case, it's in library Java, Java Virtual Machines. Can't remember where it is in Windows, but it's not that hard to find. Then make sure that the project setting is using the JDK that we want. Those are pretty much the only things that really go wrong when you're starting up with IntelliJ from scratch, but it should be um, relatively simple. And you can see I've, I've done it completely from scratch out the box here and it's worked. And the only thing I had to change to get this working was the IP address for my virtual machine with the tracks install, the username and password for the admin. I don't need to change anything else. By default, it doesn't use a proxy. However, if you want to use something like Burp Suite or Fiddler, then get Burp Suite or Fiddler running, then set up the port in here, then all your traffic will go through that proxy and all the test data creation stuff, which you don't need, but you can use it if you want, is in the setup tracks test data utility test folder. And I didn't need to change in here to run it, but if I want to create an individual user, then I can change the username and password there. So I hope that helps you get set up. Um, it shouldn't be hard, but the hardest part with any of these tools and systems is generally the setup. Because the setup requires knowledge that very often you don't have when you're starting. And it's really annoying, but we try to make this as simple as possible. I use Chocolatey to set things up on Windows. Um, I use Homebrew to set things up on Mac. If you want to see the instructions for getting all this set up, then have a look at the Java Getting Started page on the Java for Testers book. Otherwise, um, this, hopefully, if you've got those installed, should just work.